Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Beyond the Track with Daniel Blair. Thanks for tuning in. This is going to be a fun one. Uh, I'm going to get to know somebody that I don't know very well. I actually don't know him at all. This is going to be like a like a first date on a Zoom. <laughs> is that Julian? Does that sound okay? Uh, that sounds fine. I would rather take me out to the restaurant, but I mean, we'll start by baby steps. It's baby 2021. Steps. Let's start with the Zoom, <laughs> and then we'll do a date. We'll do, hey, how about this year during Supercross? We'll go on an official date. How about that? All right. <laughs> if, if you're nice enough, yeah, we'll, we'll go. Okay. On date. So um, first off, right before we press record, you told me that I would, my mind would be blown if you, if you pronounced your name in French. I, got, I, need, yeah. I need to hear it now. You, you can't leave me hanging like that. Julien Perrier. Say it one more time. <laughs> <laughs> you said it's Je like the water, Perrier. <laughs> yeah, Perrier, because you guys say Perrier, but it's actually Perrier. See, we 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 uh we could probably step that up in our country a little bit better uh, English. Hey, I, I think I I struggled in English class too until like my senior <laughs> year. Uh, hey, pumped to have you on the show. Um, don't know you, and I, I know of you. I know of your team. I'm extremely intrigued uh, by what's coming up in 2020. What are we coming into now? 2022, <laughs> and uh, I want to get into all that. But I want to start with just an intro. Uh, introduce yourself. Let me know what you've done prior to today. And then we can get into what's coming up uh, for the new year. All right. Uh, uh, I'm Julian Perrier. I'm from Mirabelle near Montreal, Canada and Quebec. Uh, dude, I started actually a race team in 2010. And you couldn't call it a race team. It's more like run my stickers. I'll give you a discount type of deal. Right. Hey, that's how, that's uh, how it always starts, though. Right. It starts it, with a sticker exchange. And then we grow. That's yeah, how it goes. Yeah, yeah exactly. And because uh, we go for, for hours for that. So I'll make it quite quick. Uh, uh, just always been into anything with a motor. So like since I was a, a kid, just enjoyed dirt bikes, mopeds, anything you can find, like even like lawnmower, I would play in them, try to fix them and stuff like that. So uh, actually when I, you know, got a little bit older and, you know, started doing better in life and stuff, I was able to buy myself some, some dirt bikes and quads. Yes, I race quads, so you guys can have a good laugh right here. I uh, actually think they're still pretty cool. So uh, I right, race quads and stuff. And uh, when I turned kind of like around 25, I'm like, all right, I'll get back to dirt biking. And what was going to be a fun summer of just trying to race, like woods racing and a couple stuff like that, ended up where we are today. Uh, with a very very stubborn person like I am, that's on the side on the merge of being a bit dumb at some point, can't really take no as an answer, and you know like, yeah, we're here right and here, now, and, and here we are, and here we are, <laughs> and like uh, along the ways, I got a lot of people that helped me in and out, like from close to far, like but my my girlfriend, my she she helped me tremendously to to get where I am and especially I'm always away you know and yeah, even man. like travels and stuff and she's really like she's a number one and on my list so that's awesome yeah. hey before <laughs> before we get any further in this I just gotta I need to know if we've crossed paths at all um so I raced up in Riviera de Loop multiple times uh, most likely I have, imagine, I have to imagine we probably at some point crossed paths I'm guessing Mo most likely yes uh you know, I've been to RDL for a long time and I actually now help Paul do the events with bringing up riders and stuff. So nice. we sure have been. I did 20, I think 2014, we did a lot of the AMA Arena Cross. I think you mm -hmm. were still doing them at that yep. point. Mm -hmm. and, and it was with uh, Sean Reif at that point. Uh, got Tyler McSwain that did one race, broke his femur right in the corner. Uh, yep. and uh kid from Quebec, Dave Blanchett, which you probably yep. crossed Pat at RD. Uh, I know, yeah, I know him very well. Know him very <laughs> Pro well. Probably got taken out or something and <laughs> ran into well, him and at, stuff. So. Some, I guarantee at Riviera de Loop, there's a pretty high odds that came into contact with oh, yeah, there's almost everybody. Every, yeah. everybody there. <laughs> there's not, there's not much room. Hey, I just actually was hanging with uh JSR couple yeah. weeks ago and we were talking about just old times and Riviera de Loop came up and we just both started laughing it's it's one of those races where super fun at the race super fun after the race 
and oh, yeah. uh, we just started laughing because we both knew that that that's yeah that, that place is a gem, man. I, I love yeah. to come there. Opening ceremonies, Paul always crushed it. It was a great event, but anyway, so yeah, we I guarantee we cross paths at some point. I'll have to bring time. you out there again. Oh, I'd love to. I, I honestly just have no... just just to, just to hang out and stuff. We're doing it just... this year, so May twenty eighth oh, should should okay. be the date if everything works well, and we have big plans on doing something really big for such a small event. So it's going to be cool. Well, I don't ride no more, so I'll come and hang out again. The after stuff is always fun. I show. Yeah, you you could, you could just team manage or something. Team manage. I love it. And that, okay. Yeah. So let's talk team manager now. So um, <laughs> take me through the building of your team. Just, I guess over the more recent years, because again, I, I'm, I'm so excited to talk about 2022, but I just want everyone to understand where this is coming from, how it was built, because uh, it's like you, you guys have built something pretty good and now it's, it's time to take the next step. So take me back a couple of years and just the development of where you are now. Oh yeah. Well, I really wanted to do this like in super high like level like we're going to be in the future years because uh, i think the, the growth is is still available for us quite a lot uh, and i think a couple doors will, will open soon um i've always been super kind of timid to, to to take two big steps so i've instead of going all out and trying to find fundings loans and stuff like that i just went into trying to make it happen progressively instead of just coming out with a bang and exiting in two years. So all I wanted was longevity. And it's, it's particularly hard when you're French Canadian from Canada to do the super cross stuff. Cause you don't get all the, the attention that, you know, like a team based in SoCal will get. And, you know, like when you start up and, you don't know anyone, you don't know everything. I still do not know everything far from that, but you know less, you make mistakes, stuff happens, budget are small, people are happy, people are unhappy. So like the path to go higher and higher and higher is very like demanding and long. So to, to get a certain recognition at one point where you're like, oh, oh, they, they seem legit now. It, mm -hmm. it takes a long time. So just started down the, the arena cross in, in AMA arena cross. Then we did a couple super cross with Carno and Carno was on my team for like four or five years. And like, he was kind of my adoptive child. So, and uh, <laughs> we had a fun time and like, we still talk at least once a week and stuff like that. So I have guys like that, that I keep, you know, in, in my circle and like more like friendship type of deal and stuff. And, I grow, they grow, everyone's happy. We see each other, it's cool. Uh, yeah, to go back to the original question, sorry, I got a little bit sidetracked. It, it, it's just like, I don't know how to say it happens, but stubbornness and no quit will maybe make it happen. Right. Like, it's right. just like baby steps and baby steps. And like, we'll talk later about what's coming up. But, you know, like every year I seem to gain a little bit of steam and a little bit of, you know, better riders, better equipment, better support. So I'm just like, hey, like it, it's, it's going to go somewhere. I, I can't quit right now. Nice. I, I, well, and I'm thinking, too, you talked about taking little steps, not going too big. I mean, some teams do that. They'll come in and they'll go so big. And then you make those mistakes. And those end up being big mistakes because you got a lot on the line. You feel like your way of doing things and just chipping away allows for mistakes to be made along the way, and they not they're not too critical to your whole operation because you're not you don't put yourself too far out there. Is that kind of the method? Was that on purpose? Was that on accident? Because it see, to me that seems like a smart smart way of doing a team. If you have long term plans, don't go too big too quick because you might make a big mistake that ruins everything. It, it takes a lot of self control by being not poor, but almost poor helps a lot. So you can't just go all out and spend that much money. And even if you're doing it super small, super like uh, conservative and stuff, it still costs a lot of money, right? So we all know it's, it's an expensive sport, but by doing it smaller with having no budget to doing it any bigger forces you to, all right, I can't go as fast as I want. So certain guys you're like oh man i'd like to sign that guy but if you're smart enough and you're like all right well if i do sign that guy it's gonna give me more problems and then benefit 
because we're not ready for that. And that was the most challenging thing to do in my head to be like, all right, we can't get this type of guy yet, but we want to, but it's just not the right timing to do it. And we're, we're here right now. And, you know, it's, it's still in my head, a super small effort. It's, which is sometimes I have to sit down like, all right, this is, this is pretty good now. So you have to at least give a, a, a pat on the shoulder saying like, yeah, you're, you're doing okay. Right? Where I'm always trying to find better ways to do better things. So it's, right. it's, it's, it's tough. That makes sense. The, mo- the money's the issue. <laughs> always, always is, which allows you to do certain things and you have to be smart about certain things. But yeah. um, obviously you put yourself in a position now to, let's just say, bring in some um, extreme talent. <laughs> Tell me about 2022. Let everybody know. <laughs> because that's when I saw the news of this, I was like, personally, I was pumped because I mean, there's, there's, yeah. there's always a place for this guy on the gate and the fact that he's going to be on the gate with you, I have to imagine you're fired up. So take us through 2022 and what it's looking like. Uh, I mean, let's just start back to how it happened. If you, if you, yeah, if you don't yeah, mind, yeah. like, yes, I wasn't even thinking that that step, you know, would, would happen this year. I was still in my mind. Like, all right, well, this year I secured title sponsor for almost like two year and an option. So like, all right, let's, let's see what we can do and stuff. And, we, me and, and Ryan at SOBMX, we did a deal where my team trains there. He helped us. He helped the team. He, had, he gave me a shop down here to work out of. And it's like, a, like, it's really like a mini factory effort, if you want, with not the factory support. But we have shops. We have mechanics. We have room to stay. We have three tracks to train. We have outdoor tracks, the gym, like hotels and stuff. So we, we made a big step, which what we can offer to people, right? So, and uh, I was talking a lot with Matt uh, Bisheglia here. He's the trainer for, for the old facility with Matt Toth. And he's like, would you entertain a conversation with Justin Hill? I'm like, yeah, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like what? We're going to talk about, um, you know, the police force or the sheriff? Yeah, like, uh, you want, or like, are we going to talk about his brother or yeah. his, the, the, their fun? No, like, like we're going to talk uh, about uh, racing uh, together. You're yeah, like, well, it's like maybe he would be interested and in maybe doing something. I'm like, sure, I'll, like, I'll talk to the guy, right? I, and we had like, our first phone call was like, I think if I'm not mistaken, like an hour and a half phone call. We gelled super well on, on the phone and the way I am and the way he is and stuff. And uh, this came about because of SOB, you know, like. He, is, is it correct? Justin and Matt have a, I mean, they're like pretty they're best much friends. Like best friends, right? Yes, so they I, are. I, I'm seeing the tie in all here where it's like, sob has matt who knows you respects you there's a mutual respect then there's justin who obviously wants to race his bike again i just saw him a month or two ago at washugo so i know he's been riding so it just looks like this magic combination where he wants to race and needs a spot you're ready to take a leap you're at the facility where you've got the friendship snap the fingers here we go i mean it's match made in heaven at least for now right (laughs) well i honestly like it's been going super well like uh like justin's not picky by any mean he just knows what he wants and by transferring that directly to me I can get him what he wants or get really close to it right because mm-hmm. some people you work with are super picky but can't transfer what they want so it's like you, you turn around and you're like ah, I don't know what you want right so I don't even know what you're saying sometimes exactly it's like it's like you're speaking French to Daniel Blair right so it's yeah, like yeah. Not, <laughs> not understood not working <laughs> so yeah I mean we had more conversation, more conversation. He's like, all right, can you get me a bike? I want to try one of your, one of your bikes. I'm like, uh, okay, yeah, sure. I'm like, in how long? He's like, can you do it in a week? Max, like two weeks. I'm like, uh, all right, I'll try. Okay. I'll give it, I'll, hey, I'll give it a shot. Say, but I'll try. Yeah. I mean, like it's, you know, it's, it's, it's COVID bikes are tough to get. Uh, like I'm in Canada. The borders were still closed. You have all those COVID testing and stuff to cross. And I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll give a stab at it. And we built R&D and got a race bike done in four days. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, like, brought it down there, MX Tech suspension. All the guys came down here. We got suspension done for him. We spent it one day. And he's like, this is pretty good. <laughs> like just like that so i'm like oh well at least it's pretty good because i was like 
what if, right? So, well, you and, did it in four days. And if you're pretty happy with what we could do in four days, what can we do in a few months? Exactly. Is that, is that the feeling right there? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And like, it just like, we, we did three, three days with, with MX tech and, and me down here and, you know, tuning some stuff. And we got him to a point where he's like, I'm really comfortable right off the bat on that thing. So of course it's not perfect. So we'll, we're working on a lot of stuff right now. We're, we're putting in laps right now. Like Justin's yeah. been riding a lot and okay. it's the first so time I have someone, you know, he's not hard on the bike. Like he's, he's not like a rough rider, but just the amount of stress that he puts on the motorcycle on the track, I go through stuff that I never went before. Is it safe <laughs> to say he may be the fastest rider you've ever worked with? Possibly. <laughs> like he I, might I, stress some things out more than the rest. He's, a, he's yeah, a maybe, fast 10, maybe 10, maybe 10, maybe 10%, right? No, like a hundred percent. Like, but I take this so positively, like what, any outcomes that comes out of this, if it's a great season or if it's a season, there's, you know, like anything can happen. Right. And like on any given day, Justin can surprise a lot of people on a super cross track. So for me, it's just, I'm taking this as a huge learning to work with a guide at that level. And I think he's, as of now, he's kind of the perfect match for what we're doing. Cause right. he's, no, I, he's taking, perfect. he's taking that year off. He assessed a lot of stuff in his head. So he's, he's coming in with a light feeling of like, yes, he wants exactly this and that, and that's fine. But like he's, he works with, with what we're working with. And, you know, we have conversations all the time. So we're really open with each other. So, you know, it's as of now, it works really well. So yeah. can't complain about that. So it's, it's, yeah. I mean, it's big. <laughs> it's big. It is, but no, it is. I mean, you're talking about a 250 Supercross champion who is, I mean, you ask anyone in the pits, uh, where does Justin Hill rank in talent? And it's podium, maybe one of the top three best Supercross riders there are as far as pure talent. Like yeah. you said, he seems motivated. And now the question is just how do we put this whole thing together? I know you're there right now. You guys are working and testing. I mean, how has the process been for you? And what's it like working with someone that has that much experience and knows, knows exactly what he wants instead of like, hey, let's figure it out together. He's like, no, nah, this is what I want. Let's go build this thing. What's that been like for you? What, what are these days like? They're actually really good. It's, it's for me, like I'm, I've never been and I'll never be the, the guy that knows it all. And to work with Justin, I, I feel he's like the same, same way too. Like, yes, he wants certain things done a certain way, but he's willing to try anything that I can suggest to him. You know, like he's open-minded about what I know from, from the Cowies and from what I've done in the past. And like we try stuff and ev like we're making good steps every time. Like sometimes we'll take a little step back, scratch that, go back to it, to, to what it is. But uh, it's, it's good. It's good. I can't really say nothing. Like I'm not overly stressed. I'm not like, yes, we're going a little bit through a lot more parts, but I mean, it is what it is. It's, it's, it's their bike. Like he needs to be, like safe on the bike and you know like we i every day i'm on partzilla and ordering oem parts oem parts oem parts and and partzilla has been our title sponsor for this up, upcoming 2022 2023 and optional 2024 so every day i'm just ordering and like if i i i think ahead with a guy like that where you know i'll i'll, I'll pre-order clutches i'll pre-order stuff that i try to keep in stock which everything's kind of still tough with inventory, but I like, I need to be, instead of being a week before I need to be a month before. So yeah, to be ordered to in order, sorry, to keeping on, keep him on the track as much as possible. Makes sense. Um, part Zilla title sponsor. I think for a lot of small teams coming up, it's hard to land uh, a title sponsor that really can be impactful. How did that happen? I mean, how did you guys make that relationship work? How to get started? I mean, I love the fact that you're talking a two to three year deal, which I would assume gives you some security, right? Instead of going every year and wondering what are we going to do? It, this is like, now I can really build because I've got that security, but how did that come about? I mean, how are those guys to work with so far? Just kind of take me through everything with Partzilla. Uh, I, it's, it, listen, like for, for me, the sponsorship side of things has always been the fun part. 
because my background is to sell and marketing. So like I used to teach sales over in Europe, Canada and stuff to most of the business are car businesses and stuff like that. So for me, that, that, that selling pinpoint of putting your logo on my semi is the good stuff for me. So that's where I, you know, I, I do pretty good. So last year at Atlanta, um, a gentleman named Raleigh Smith works for Kawasaki USA. He's, uh, he's uh, I think, a district sales manager for Georgia. Uh, from the dealer that sponsored us last year, Deep South Kawasaki, um, we got intro, if you want. And uh, he came yeah. up to my rig in Atlanta and like he was like, wow, like this is a really nice setup. Like it's, it's nice, pretty nice semi, like nice awning. Like the bikes look good. Like they're all like decked out and like, you know they look legit and stuff and he gave me his phone number and stuff and he's like if any way i can help i want to help so raleigh is the initial part so he's nice. good good buddies not buddies but good business contact for uh part uh, and that's how it went like he introduced me to these guys i had one phone call they, uh, Martin over there seemed interested in having more. So we did Zoom meetings because this is COVID 2021. So, and uh, it, it all fell like together really nicely. Nothing was forced, nothing like, like it was really good to work with the guys. And uh, I really, really want to do super good for them, like for publicity wise and stuff. So we have a lot of stuff coming for our pits and Supercross. So uh, with Partzilla and like, we're going to give away big, big big money from Partzilla to spend on their website and stuff so we're gonna give back to to fans a lot so mm -hmm. and especially having Justin in the pits and all our other riders which is our all cool guys and they like the fans like yeah so we, we're gonna do I think we're gonna do really well with Partzilla and hopefully we can go up to four or five years of a deal right because yeah. uh yeah it, 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 it was super good to work with them it is super good to work with them sorry and like it's fairly easy you know and i think both of side we make him we make it easy for each other so right it works really well so i'm pretty pumped on that it's yes it's a security um but like i see i like if everything goes well i see a lot of stuff coming up with parts of on the prmx name going over the years so um, and continuing yeah. to grow together yeah, which would be like, good I, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the fun part, right, is once a relationship is set, then it's like, okay, how can we make this great? Um, I'm interested in your answer on this because you come from a sales and marketing background, but if you're part Zilla, there's a couple of things you're wanting, right? You, you love a rider to be on television and getting the name out there to the masses. You got a guy that can do that. Then there's the pits, the activation, the people on hand that are walking through. For you, you had a lot to manage, but when it comes to the marketing side, how are you going to balance uh, the priorities? Is it is it just get Justin up front, or is it Justin? Let's get you up front as much as as much as possible. But then these pits, we have got to crush it with the activation. I mean that that's a heavy load and a, and a tight balance that you got to find when you're trying to get Partzilla, you know, that kind of advertisement. So how what's what's the game plan? Uh, the, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of work. That's the game plan. Um, it's, it's going to be to have good time management and make sure we have like spots open for the fans. And then after get Justin in, in a, in a, in a mood of racing, right? So it's a bit like all the other teams, like the bigger teams now do where autograph session two to three 30 and then it's over. Like, I'm not saying we're not, we, we won't answer people, but like for, and even like, we're talking a lot about Justin and all our other guys will, will go, we'll, we'll talk about them a little bit later. And it's like, it's the same thing. Like you guys are paid or helped to go racing to promote all of our sponsors. Yep. So you want better suspension, better motor package. You want, you want the optimal privateer, call it the way you want bike. Well, I want the optimal promoting tool, which is you. So like I'm, we're, we're still like working into the new riders and stuff like that. But as soon as everything is set, like I'm a pain in the butt to deal with the riders to be like, Hey, post this, Hey, post that. Hey, you didn't post that properly. Hey, correct that. So it's like, like I, I'm, I'm alone in this and my girlfriend helps me a lot, but I, I, I oversee everything as of now. And you know, one day I want to 
maybe take a little bit of step back, but like I oversee everything here daily uh, when I'm down here in the shop, like don't use this part, use that part. No, you're, you're using too much brick cleaner. Like just, you know, like stuff <laughs> like that. So yeah. we're, like, we're still on a budget. Right. So yes, the, the sponsors like uh, uh, Partzilla and, and whatnot, they help financially, but I still got to pay people and stuff like that. So like, you know, we don't throw air filters away. We wash them. So it's, That's, it's, hey, it's how it's, funny is that? You're like, Justin, let me know what you need to help you be successful. I'll give you whatever you want, but lay off the brake cleaner. Yeah, kind of. Lay off the brake cleaner, man. <laughs> like, if you want better of this, you got to save money over here. Yeah, Stop we, spraying we it around like deodorant. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. No, exactly. It's like, I mean, it is what it is. Like, it's, 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 it's in the small things. I think we, we make it big. You know, like everything counts and, you know, to have good bikes, even with my 250s with William Motorworks, we put a lot of time and R&D on for a private gear effort like that. Like we've been doing R&D on the 21 250F since last year and changing stuff. HGS is our pipe sponsor. Like they send us different headers, different slip-ons. Like they, they work with the RPMs. They work with everything. And it's like Wasner gives us the, the, the cut piston that we want that way, this way, light and, and blah, blah, blah for practice bikes, for race bikes. It's like, we're like the background I told you a little bit earlier, I traveled a lot in Europe. So I went to HGS. I went to Wasner and introduced myself. And, you know, I know these guys personally now. Yeah. So, and that makes a big difference. So like one day That's I want to, I want to go race those German supercross. I want to race in Australia. Like it's like, yes, AMA supercross is the, the main goal, but like in my head, I'm so like always wanting something more, something else. Like I'm all <laughs> over the map. So it's like, it's, uh, it, it's cool. You sound like you run a race team. <laughs> kind of. I think you want more. I want more. I I want more. I do my best. That's that's how it works, right? Um, Tell me about the rest of your roster. There's a certain rider I'd like to get into in detail because I might know the guy. Uh, But tell me about the rest of your roster this year. Uh, Let's let's just start with your your question. Let's get into it. Tell me about my guy. How how did it all happen with my NorCal buddy? Um, I know that he's out there. I'm a big fan of him. I've watched him since he was like a – I'd probably say early school boy, I think right after mini bikes, but, and he's, Hey, he's an online sensation too. If you want some marketing, he's well liked online. So tell me about, tell me about my guy. Are you talking about B-Ray by any chance? I'm talking about the B-Ray. I, lo- oh, I love yeah. B-Ray. And you know, it's funny too. It's funny that he's on the team because when I saw him last time I saw him I was up at Washougal at the Top Gun, he was giving Justin Hill all he could handle. I mean, Justin, I think was probably a, Probably started out annoyed and then probably was pretty intrigued by the end because B-Ray is super talented. And yeah, so so how did this all come together? Yeah, uh, Justin has a little bit to do in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like uh, four months ago, like Ryan here at South of the Border told me like that B-Ray kid, you know, like never heard of him. Like, so I look him up. I didn't go further with it and stuff like that. So I just look at his profile and stuff and like all right and then we're trying to you know process rider picking and stuff like that and um funny story one of his fans slash friends gave me a call <laughs> it's like you have to ra- help b-ray out and I'm like who's b-ray again and he's like well b-ray i'm like oh yeah 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 this uh, ryan mentioned it to me so i'm like all right so I, I opened my Instagram. So B-Ray followed me. So I follow him back. So just a couple words here and there and blah, blah, blah. And I talked to the kid a few times on the phone and, and whatnot. So I, I learned his story. Story's cool. And it's like, seems like a nice, uh, nice young guy and stuff. And, uh, and the, the, the Justin story came about and he's like, hey, that guy, like he, like he smoked me <laughs> at the, <laughs> at the hey, track I, with a I'm telling you right bike. now, I, he borrowed. A Cowie 450 and then like a, a KTM 250 two stroke. KTM 250 two stroke. And I remember going to watch. I went to the fence and I'm like, yeah, I want to see how he does. You know, Benny Bloss is there and Justin Hill. And I mean, I didn't watch every moto, but I watched a couple where B Ray smoked both of them yeah. bad. And I, and, and, 
And, and I knew that that was possible because the kid is got talent pouring out of his ears. Yeah. But still to see him actually be able to start and close and do what he did, I was just pumped for him. And I'm thinking, man, what's yeah. going to happen with this kid? Like he needs help, whatever. And then I see that he lands there and I'm like, God, I'm so glad he got a landing spot because yeah, he is talented yeah. and he's young. He's there's a lot to learn there, but yeah, Julian, you're working with some talent. The kid has got a yeah, lot yeah. of skill. Uh, he's a cool kid. Um, yeah, after that race and stuff, uh, me and B Ray talked a lot more, and I, I invited him here at SOB to test uh, test a bike, not for if he liked the bike or not, just to hang out with him a little bit. He stayed here, and you know, I'm like, when I sent him home, I sent him home with a contract, so he was super, super pumped, and we were super awesome. happy to have him. Um, it's going to be uh, a lot of work to work with B Ray. He's uh, very, very energetic. He's young. He wants to ride, 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 ride. And you can't be that much of an animal if you want to say it like that in super props. Yeah. You have to have some pause. And like yesterday, I'm like, you're not riding. He's like, I, I want to ride, but you raced all weekend. You know, it's like, I just want to ride. Well, yeah, it's, I think B race, like his most uh, downside is probably B race. Like his, his worst enemy is himself just because he wants he wants to ride all the time. And that's like, all right. And we're trying to tame him down. It's like taming down a racehorse or something. Like he's always yeah. like yesterday, like, again, I, I told you, like, don't ride. Okay. Dude, he was spinning a lap on the pit bike on the supercross track. I'm like, hey, time out. Out. Get out. <laughs> so he's like, yeah. Have you, heard, have, you heard, have you heard of Chase Sexton? You <laughs> yeah, broke so his like, collarbone on a pit bike, man. Like, get off that thing, dude. Yeah. So you it, should put that, hey, put that in his contract that you yeah. control his ride days and pit <laughs> bikes are not allowed. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I know when I'm down here, we will have a little bit of a more of a tight schedule and stuff like that. And everyone wants to help the kid too. So um, yeah, it, it's going to be interesting to see him progress as he's really good right off the bat on the super cross track. But of course, you know, like whoops and stuff like that is a big yeah. learning curve and he hasn't done it ever or barely. So uh, yeah, it's, he's an interesting fella. Give him, uh, people that don't follow him should follow him because he's just funny. Oh, uh, he is. And he's incredible on a bike. Um, would the plan be for him? <laughs> to ride east would that be would that be the plan for him the, the or, most, do you, or do you not know, yet? not know yet i don't know yet but the most uh, easy thing to do sorry for my french here it would be for him to race west coast okay J just for you know like living stuff and whatnot right yeah, um, i mean yeah he's I, from he's from north cal by me so i mean it's it makes sense the first six rounds here exactly it makes sense but you know in dirt bikes nothing really makes sense so we'll see and we'll see the progress and stuff like i told everyone everyone's like i want to race east i want to race west. i'm sending the fastest guy on the practice track out west so whoever's going quickest send them out we're, there. we're going like most likely right it's 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 the vision i have like the guys that are most prepared will go out west and the other ones they will stay here and get more prep in so you uh, know who, and who's the rest of the team um we have a lot of riders again. So, um, <laughs> Rod Bell, we got Justin yep. Rod Bell. So, you know, are you going to let him? Bell. Will he be able to quit his job during the winter or does he have to go work during the week? What's the plan with Rod Bell? I, I honestly think Rod Bell will stop working for a full year, <laughs> like summer. Okay, and winter. good. Dang, so, so we'll, full, fully commit, get off the payroll yeah. back home. And yeah. Fully I, commit. Yeah. I think with, with the proper, situation let's just say it like that i think rob bell can do better and he wants to do better so we have the same goal uh, i might bring him up to canada in the 450 class because i really think he could be on the box out there and you know if we if we can make him a regular podium guy in canada this summer and do some u.s outdoors at the same time because you know sponsors and stuff but yeah. I think if, if we can boost him up to be a podium guy and come back down to U.S., it's going to be an awesome transition, you know, because there's nothing yeah. better than winning or being on the box. So uh, you can confidence. do all the training. Big, yeah. big confidence booster. You can carry that anywhere. You can do all the training in the world and be at the fastest at the test track. But landing on the box is just like an eye opener. I can do this. So it's like that's uh, 
that's Rod Bell's plan. As of now, things may change. We might stay full time down here. We might split it up. Like there, there's a, the main focus right now is Supercross, and Rod Bell's finally going to be on the 250 Supercross. He's never really done it. He's always wanted to do it. So we're going to take good care of him and all the riders to to perform as best as possible for nice. for for Bell Rod Co. <laughs> <laughs> and, so. and who, who else a lot of riders and, and then after you get through this roster i just got to know why so many <laughs> I, I, i'm I happy i love it i for me i i love when teams take a chance and they fill the fill the rig but why so many and then who are the other names uh why so many i just like to help people like everyone in my team has a cool story like everyone in my team deserves to be helped. Not saying that the guys I talk to doesn't doesn't deserve the help, but like I feel like what we end up with, with what happened, maybe this guy didn't do, this guy did, and blah blah blah. But whatever we end up with right now is cool. Like and they're they're all like people that were doing good, but will hopefully do way better. So coming into that guy, you probably know from Arena, arena Cross is under sales. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, Again, talented guy on a dirt bike, right? Like Hunter is fast, raw speed, very, very fast. So yesterday was the first time he ever tested suspension for a day. Ever? Ever. <laughs> Other than like doing a sag and clickers with, with a friend or someone, like. Right? So we had four technicians from MX Tech for him for like two hours. And he's like, I don't know what to say. I'm like, just how you feel? It feels awesome. Okay. <laughs> Would you like to do more adjustment? I don't know. I can't tell. Like everything's good. <laughs> so it's like to have like the, the, the support from MX Tech, like it's crazy what they do for us. And it's like, uh, like I think Hunter will do well too. Like I, I really think all my guys will do well. Uh, like I didn't pick any of them just to be like, yeah, I'll get this guy. No, like everyone has a spot like that I really like to have. So yeah. Uh, after that, we have uh, Justin Thompson. Justin Thompson's mm-hmm. a cool story. Like, uh, yep. I've helped Justin for I th- that's our tentative third season that we're trying to do something. He got hurt, and then got hurt, and I'm like, all right, didn't have a contract with the kid. I'm like, Justin, I'll help you when you come back. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah. Like, I'll, I want to give you a full Supercross season and see what we can do together. Right. So he's back. He's at SOB training. Uh, like amazingly good family like i i gel well with the family with the uh, his brother too is pretty cool so sometimes he'll come and rent for us and so like there's there's the background too that comes with the riders that i really enjoy um i don't want to miss anyone right so <laughs> i have so, too many <laughs> i love so. it i mean i honestly i love it it's just again it's the sport is tough and when a team comes out and does what you do, it's just, I think it means a lot to the fans and a lot to the other riders in the pits, knowing that there's places and that there's teams out there that are willing to take oh, a yeah. chance to help people. And it's just, it's yeah. rad to see you put this together. Um, quick question as a private team, obviously you love the title sponsor, but then you got to build the rest of your, your team. Yeah. yeah. The, bi- the big one is the motorcycle. Uh, why Kawasaki? What, what's, what's the relationship there? What, what's the reason for going team green? Yeah, I'll just finish up with the riders. I'm not done. There's oh, yeah, yeah, more. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jeez, I, all right. Get out the AMA scorecard from last year. And yeah, yeah. we got. All right, so yeah, who do we like got before we time. go to Cali? So, Justin Hill, Rob Bell, V-Ray, Hunter Sales, Thompson, and then last but not least, Julian Bennett. Uh, I'm sure you don't know Julian. Julian's from Canada. Uh, I really wanted to have a Canadian racer coming down. Uh, me and uh, Carlson uh, Racing, which is a race team from Canada, more mm-hmm. Brent Carlson's. He helped me this summer to do the Canadian stuff, and we we decided to bring a Canadian kid down. And um, Julian's the the one that stand out for me this summer. Uh, he didn't race for me, and he he turned 17 in August, and he was like literally top five every weekend or top six or very close to the guys with with okay equipment let's just say it like that and and then okay support so again that's a kid super super young he's not afraid of the whoops you can go on his instagram and look at his uh, story from yesterday which he crashed really <laughs> hard in the whoops Didn't but he, care. He, he, it just doesn't slow down and just goes into them and sometimes he, he passes him and you're like 
and sometimes he doesn't, and he just starts again. So, <laughs> hey, the uh, ultimate goal is that he always gets through them, but hey, at least well, he's trying uh, to. Yeah, yeah, but it's just like body positioning and stuff like that, and we're gonna correct that. And the kids is gonna be so fast in the whoops, and he's a tall, he's a bigger kid too, so um, that's gonna be great. So, yeah, Julian's the the last supercross guy that we'll have on the team. So we have six guys total. Yeah, Hunter. Hunter will be our hybrid guy this year. So he's going to do uh, some 450 rounds and, and 250s. Nice. I mean, again, I'm, I'm just a lot of respect on your way for putting that together. For a lot of people, like you said, different stories for everybody, different reason why you want them all. And I, yeah. I, I, I love it. You get Hill, you get a champion, then you got these young kids that are just learning. Then you've got some guys that have made mains that have like proven that they know how to do it. And I, I love it. We, Great have, we have a mix of it all, right? So yeah, everyone can bring very... something to the table. So youth brings energy, brings the craziness and stuff. And like you have those mid guys where they made mains, like sales done a couple top tens on the 250 and stuff like that. So like, and Hill, Hill is like the, the big brother in, 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 in the story. So he helps a lot with these kids setting up bikes and this and that and getting to learn what they like and what they don't. So like, I think, everyone everything's gelling pretty cool so and i think justin really likes to to help out at the same time as being a racer and like mentor and stuff like that so i mean everything's pretty decent love it great roster um so back to the kawasaki question why kawasaki yeah well raleigh smith works for kawasaki um partsilla owns a couple dealers across the country and it, it it goes with the fact that they have kawi dealers Mm-hmm. and i i wasn't like obligated to but i've been on kawi for so long that and i'm really comfortable with them and stuff and i kind of know my stuff around it and uh raleigh texted me like i'm happy that the partsilla stuff worked and whatnot it would be cool to see you on green again so like i just say yeah we'll be on green and then partsilla stepped in with their dealers and found us some bikes we we're still waiting on some and that's why Kawasaki and I think they have a great, great contingency program for the riders, uh, for, for like the, the main event guys and even night show and stuff like they're the highest contingency for, 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 for riders and stuff. So that's important to, to look at, uh, there's other great manufacturers out there, but the fact that these guys can make a little bit more money and focus more on training is, is one of, one of the reasons I stick with Kawi and just the fact that I'm used to what they do. Right. So yeah I, I mean i love it like you said you probably have a, a good base knowledge of that bike you don't have to start over and then i like how you take the riders financials into consideration because contingency yeah. is huge man it's like it, it's what helps keep it going and i mean i applaud them for doing that when i heard last year the, their payout structure i was just like god that's great that they do that because we got a lot of riders on the gate that don't get a lot of help and if the manufacturers could put more in yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of that. So kudos on them and kudos for you to making it work and sticking to what works. Um, my last question for you before we end the episode is goals. And you've already talked about you got a two year, possibly three year deal with Partzilla. You got Justin Hill. We're growing this thing. But at the end of the day, when we look back at the end of 2022, what do we want to see? What, what are we chasing goal wise? Is, is there numbers that we're chasing? Is it I mean, just is it more about just everybody developing to be better than they were before. I, just kind of take me through your hopes um, uh, <laughs> for 2022 and what we can look back and, and be proud of if it happens. Yeah, I mean, I th- in my head, there's big plans, right? And the goal is to have a really, really good season. Uh, with the off season we are having right now, I see good things from everyone. Um, numbers are not irrelevant but like I, I just want everyone to be to do their best results they ever had like if Hill his best was a six or seven I want him to do a five you know like it's mm-hmm. and we all know that he's capa- he, he, he can podium like I'm 100% sure he can podium and to be on the box with a privateer 450 would be out of this world you know what i mean like for our sport people are like well i just finished third i'm like yeah you don't understand what comes into play with this right so yeah. <laughs> but even that just wasn't to, an accident <laughs> no it, 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 even just to be a regular top 10 guy which is the goal it's 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 a challenge like 
the, the field is super deep, super, super deep. Like it's, we don't know till we get to the races. Right. So, um, and like my 250 guys is main events, main events, just, just get into the main and after ride hard, like, you know, and we'll, we'll crack 15, we'll crack 10. And like, it's, it's just to, for me, yes, results are important, but the fact that we're, we're making a living, everyone's paying their bills, sponsors are happy, results are good. Like this, all the, the, the package will make everything step up for 2023. So like, it's not just, oh, we need to, we need to be top 10. We need to be in a good results on the track. But nowadays we need to be a good media people. We need to do interviews like this. We need to promote everything. Like, and it's not just me, like every rider and all our sponsors, we, we have a, a few new sponsors on the team that you know they they came in big and they, they're gonna help a lot and uh like it's it's i can i can announce a few if you want like we're, we're yeah, going yeah. with, with, with o'neill o'neill gear um you know like that came about with with hill and rod bell like you know i've 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 talked to to mark at o'neill last year and the year before and you know it just didn't make it happen and now with having o'neill guys already on it just made sense yep. um to go that way and you know, we're, we're going to be a full HJC team, everyone in the HJC helmet and, and stuff like that. But these guys are just bringing up a little bit more to the program to make it even better. Like, yep. like guys like the Vol Racing, they're a super small company and they do really well. And, you know, they stepped it up. Uh, ASV Lever stepped it up. Like OG's Goggle, they stepped it up. Like everyone, like even uh, Williams, more time on the bikes, more dyno, more testing, more mm. like everyone stepped it up. And I don't want to take three hours and name everyone, but you know, like it's everyone has a major role, even if they're small. Yep. So I love it, yeah. man. I love it. Um, <laughs> countdown is on. I mean, it's less than two months and we're going racing. So uh, I, I just want to thank you for taking the time to come on the show with me. Um, no, you got a lot of work to do, especially today. You're, you're out there grinding. So thanks again, yeah. Julian. I appreciate it. Uh, best of luck in 2022. And I have a feeling we'll be talking a lot this year. And again, we're going to go, we're going to get some dinner official. Yeah. Well, official if, if you feel like, uh, you know, we're a good match here, we can, we can go on a date at some point. I, I felt like this is a good start. I'm intrigued <laughs> for a second meeting. Let's talk, next time is in person. You cut nice. you pay the bill though. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> hey thanks for coming on the show man i'll talk to you thank soon. you thanks thanks guys